Well, we got a nice rainy day outside and thought I'd spend a little time in the shop and see if there's something I can fiddle around with, make a video on. I remembered my son had told me uh, a couple of weeks ago that the palm sander was broken, which, you know, that's normally not that big a deal. I've, I've had these things for years and usually the thing that uh, quote unquote breaks is actually just a wear item and that's this pad. So what I do is when I, when I pick up a new sander, which I've had this one for quite a while now, I go ahead and I buy some replacement pads. The sander is typically, you know, $30 or so, maybe $35, $40, depending on the brand. Of course, this is a Black & Decker. These pads can be bought for about $5 a piece, and it's the first, usually, the first thing that's going to wear out on these sanders. Very easily to replace because it is just glued on. You can see there's an adhesive back there, and I bet you that these are very generic in that this pad would fit several different brands of quarter sheet i think they call it a four and a half inch palm sander through wear and tear these edges wear down get beveled maybe get gouged, depending on what kind of work you're doing with it. If you're trying to sand on something sharp, you'll definitely gouge these out. So it's very easy to peel this stuff off, get a fresh, uh, get something and clean that up and then put a new pad on. But when I came out today to look at this one, it was uh, in a little worse shape than I thought. This plastic piece here, which should be identical on the other side, is actually broken off. What happens a lot of times if these things are turned on when they're not actually touching the object that you're trying to sand, they will uh, overrun, vibrate too much, or whatever you want to call it, and, and something is liable to break. I like to put the, put the sander on the item I'm going to sand, then turn it on, and then before I lift it up, I'm going to turn it back off. This is the kind of damage that can happen if you don't follow that advice. Okay. I'm not going to fix this one anymore. I've had it for probably five years now. Looking at the uh, invoice for this pad, I bought three of these pads in 2011. This is 2015. And they were $5.63 a piece in 2011. This is actually a DeWalt part number. And uh, like I said, they, they have to be generic in that this, this part number is for DeWalt and I'm putting it on a Black & Decker, but it really wouldn't matter who made it. If it's a quarter sheet pad, which this is a quarter sheet pad, I think they call it a four and a half inch pad, it's gonna have to fit on there. That's my interpretation or thinking anyway okay so anyway what am i doing with this video i guess one thing i'll give these guys a plug because that's who i buy some of my replacement parts from i'm sure you can get them from a lot of different places on the internet they'll give you a uh a breakdown on everything so anyway back to this sander i'm like well you know it's still got now it's cold today and for you northerners i know it's not really cold it's not even freezing outside but you know what uh, when my extension cord won't roll up correctly it's too cold so the cord is still in good shape it's not a grounded plug or anything but it's still in good shape i could use it on something else so i'm at least going to get the plug the uh, extension cord or the cord off of this machine so let's see what we can do about taking it apart there's two obvious screws here. It may or may not want to come out. There we go. 
In addition to those, sometimes they'll hide fasteners behind these labels. It feels like there's one there and one there. So you can pierce that or peel it off completely. And uh, let's hope it's the same type of fastener here. Feels like it. I know the first thing that I saw when I took this thing, uh, when I took that base plate off, that broken plate there, the first thing I saw that was still usable was a bearing. Still a good bearing. It's a sealed bearing. Still, still in good shape. And I know uh, a project that I could build with this, but I, I'm not going to build it <laughs> because I just bought, I bought one. I bought that particular thing that I was going to make with that. I'll figure out something. Something will uh, materialize that that bearing will be used for. I can almost guarantee it. It's hard to throw stuff away when you're a little older and you know how things can break on you. You learn what to keep, what to throw away. So there's really nothing in here that I would need at all that's going in the trash. I should say this, it's pretty obvious, this is not plugged in. <laughs> That'd be pretty crazy to take this apart with it plugged in. Now, uh, like I said before, I'm going to get the cord. So let's go ahead and get the cord out of the way. And see what else we have to deal with. Now these sanders operate by oscillating that pad that we looked at a while ago. And the way they do that is there's a switch on there too. If I I may pick that off and put it in my electronics box. Possibly will. But anyway, back to the the way these things work. If you will look at the center of this uh, this fan, which it's more it serves more purpose than just a fan, but uh, its other purpose is to actually make this sander work. It is drilled off center. If you can see that. They did it on purpose. This bearing slides over there. If it were cleaner. And as this, uh, as the motor spins, Since this part is actually not center, it's going to, I'm going to exaggerate this, but as the, as the motor is spinning, it's, since this is uh, drilled off center, it's going to move it this way. Okay, this was attached to that pad, so it's going to make the pad do this. But it's going to make the pad do this several thousand times a minute. And that's how those things work. Matter of fact, if you lay the sander on a painted surface and you turn it on turn it off and lift it you'll see micro abrasions in circular patterns that's how these sanders work and they work really well i love them i used to have you know two or three before i figured out that uh that you could buy the replacement parts so easily the great thing about the internet so there's a uh, there's another bearing here I may savage, salvage. Of course you could. There we go. You take the bearing off. This is uh comes off very easily once you're you know cuz the the motor normally spins this way there's no chance of it coming undone. So if you just spin it in the opposite direction it comes right off. I would not keep that because it's drilled off center. I wouldn't use it on any other project probably. You could thinking about it here 
you could fashion a way to connect this to a container such as let's say a a gallon plastic bucket okay you could take that you could take that that old base and put it back on here and then attach the uh, the bottom of the gallon bucket to that and put all this stuff back together fasten it down securely and when you turn it on you know what's going to happen the bucket's going to vibrate you could put uh, ammunition casings in there with polishing compound you could use possibly you could uh, put some stones in there with some polishing compound just thinking out of the box here because i'm not really planned what i was going to do here except take this thing apart but there's things you could do with this because the motor does still run you you could still do things with it but I, i'm not going to do it i'm not going to do it okay there's a washer it's a good fat one uh you could probably press this bearing off now as this sits right now you could do other things with it possibly if you wanted to get into some science experiments uh ways to make this work because it normally would use a um, what's the word for this not armature or is it i can't think can't think of what these parts are called but at any rate there's there's stuff you could do of course if nothing else you can salvage there's a little copper in here you could salvage it i wouldn't go through all that trouble but you know that's basically it you can break this down really probably all i'm going to keep is the extension the uh the power cord it unplugs here i've got a switch that's where your bushings bushings brushes sorry that's where your brushes connect to your or uh, touch your your armature but that's it just because this little dust seal is not any good anymore the switch works fine so instead of just throwing stuff away take a look at how you can repurpose it you know today i got me a decent switch and a power cord still in good shape and a bearing and i'm going to do something with that <laughs> until next time thanks a lot for watching